political protests, shopping statistics, and a cacophonous crowd all coming your way on CNN Student News. But we start with diplomacy and a dispute. The dispute is about a section of sky over part of Asia. China, Japan, South Korea, and the U.S. all fly planes through the area. But recently, China said it owns the airspace. That's led to tensions between several Asian governments. Vice President Joe Biden is on a trip to Asia right now. He's hoping to provide some of the diplomacy and to keep the tense situation from turning into something worse. Vice President Joe Biden, with one eye towards a possible 2016 bid, is getting the chance to flex his international muscle power in Asia. The United States has an interest in, low, in the lowering of tensions in this vital region, as I believe all the countries in Northeast Asia uh, share that same interest with us. Biden, in crisis manager mode, arrived in Tokyo as the region confronts a power grab by Beijing. China declared it now controls a vast portion of the airspace over the East China Sea and remote islands that both China and Japan claim. Biden will bluntly ask the Chinese leaders their military intentions when he stops in China next. U.S. officials worry China's ultimate aim is a confrontation with Japan. We, the United States, are deeply concerned by the attempt to unilaterally change the status quo in the East China Sea. This action has raised regional tensions and increased the risk of accidents and miscalculation. China is demanding aircraft flying through the zone file flight plans and maintain radio contact. While some U.S. commercial airliners are complying, U.S. military aircraft will not. And the Obama administration is making clear it rejects China's declaration of the air defense identification zone. This is in no way indicates U.S. government acceptance of China's requirements. The U.S. insists it will continue flying military aircraft through the Chinese zone and has begun a long-planned deployment of advanced P-8 reconnaissance aircraft to Japan that can carry torpedoes, missiles, bombs, and mines. Barbara Starr, CNN, the Pentagon. It's time for the shout-out. Which country is highlighted on this map of Eastern Europe? If you think you know it, then shout it out. Is it Estonia? Latvia, Lithuania, or Ukraine? You've got three seconds. Go. That's Ukraine, one of the largest countries in Europe and home to more than 44 million people. That's your answer, and that's your shout out. Around 1920, Ukraine was conquered by the former Soviet Union. It became an independent country again in 1991. Today, Ukraine is split. Some people in the eastern part of the country think Ukraine should be more associated with Russia. Some people in the west think it should be more aligned with the European Union. Ukraine was getting ready to sign a political and trade agreement with the European Union. But a couple weeks ago, Ukraine's president called off the talks. That's when protesters turned out, demanding changes in their country's government. Most of the protests have been peaceful, some have turned violent, and there doesn't seem to be an end to this in sight. It is like no revolution I've ever seen. This square, independent square, is filled with happy, smiling, jumping, dancing people. It is one effective way to keep warm in these freezing temperatures. Day, day, day. Day, day, day. La, 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 la. But it is also, they say, a mark of their peaceful intentions. But for all their talk of peace and, and for all the happiness of the mood here, people here are talking about something pretty serious, and that is revolution. What started all this was the anger of people unhappy with the Ukrainian government's decision not to sign association and free trade agreements with the European Union. These are people who believe that the future of Ukraine should be close to Europe. But what has hardened their position, what has led them to occupy this square in these numbers around the clock, was the use of force by Ukrainian police against some of the protesters. This used to be part of the giant Christmas tree standing in the center of Independence Square. For all the, the dancing and the smiling, nothing symbolizes the angry determination of this crowd, the revolutionary feel of this scene like this. They have built barricades across all the streets leading into Independence Square. If the police come, this crowd will not let them in easily. Many of them say they are determined to stay here until they get what they want, 
which is a new government for Ukraine. Phil Black, CNN, Kiev. Time for a shout out, extra credit. In the business world, what color is often used to represent profits? You know what to do. Is it black, white, green, or red? Put another three seconds on the clock and go. When a company is making a profit, it's said to be in the black. That's your answer, and that's your shout out extra credit. And that's why the day after Thanksgiving is sometimes called Black Friday. It's the start of the holiday shopping season, and it's a time when stores are hoping to make enough sales to put themselves in the black. The deals that stores offer on Black Friday sometimes lead to scenes like this. Shoppers flooding in, sometimes fighting over stuff. But industry analysts say Black Friday sales were lower this year than last year, significantly down more than 13%. Some of that might have been because stores opened on Thanksgiving Day. It also might have something to do with Cyber Monday. Same idea, but different day, and it's online. And this year, it was huge. Cyber Monday sales were up more than 20% over last year. Shopping on mobile devices made up the biggest part of that. But a big change could be coming to online shopping thanks to a decision by the U.S. Supreme Court. Monday was the biggest online shopping day ever. The very same day the Supreme Court decided it would not hear a case regarding something that affects all of everybody who shops online, sales taxes, and you should be paying those sales taxes. In other words, folks, it was probably the last Cyber Monday without sales tax for millions. It's the biggest issue in retail. States want tax revenue. Online retailers uh, want tax-free shopping. Brick-and-mortar retailers want the online guys to have the same rules as the stores. Shoppers, we were all lured online by no tax in the first place, and now the Supreme Court has punted on this. States lose about $23 billion a year in uncollected sales tax, so the states want to find ways to get that tax revenue from web retailers. The Supreme Court decided not to get involved in appeals from Amazon.com and Overstock.com. The court let stand a ruling from a New York court requiring that Internet retailers collect sales taxes even if they have no physical presence in the state. This effectively ends tax-free online shopping for many people, and it gets other states thinking about how they can bring in more tax dollars, too. A Seahawk might not sound menacing. Seattle Seahawks certainly sound smoother than Seattle Ospreys, and a team record of 11-1 and one sounds like Super Bowl to some. But nothing sounds like the Seahawks' CenturyLink field. It's loud. It set a Guinness World Record for noise earlier this season. Decibel levels here can exceed the volume of thunder, and during the Monday night football face-off between the Seahawks and the Saints, fans went seismic. Late in the first quarter, there was a Saints fumble. There was a Seahawks recovery. There was a touchdown by defensive end Michael Bennett. And there was an earthquake. The crowd went so wild that at a seismic recording station nearby, a tremor measuring between magnitude 1 and 2 shook the ground. It's not the first time this has happened. Marshawn Lynch triggered a tremor with a touchdown back in 2011. And it's not a major quake. It won't actually bring a house down when fans bring the house down. But it shows that when you mix an exceptional team with an exceptional fan base in an exceptionally loud stadium, you have a recipe that rocks. All right, we're heading to three continents for Worldwide Wednesday, including our first stop in South America. We're starting in Canada with the Falcons from Our Lady of Fatima Catholic School in Ontario. From there, we head south to Brazil to check in with the Wildcats from the International School of Curitiba. We started with Falcons, we're going to wrap with the Falcons, this time at Vilsack High School in Germany. This show's been stuffed, but hopefully you left some room for dessert or breakfast, because Dr. Dan the Pancake Man is taking us home. His griddle greatness is gaining attention because of his penchant for pancake performance art. He does cats, smiley faces, the logo for the local pro hockey team. He has a whole battery of tools at his disposal. Dr. Dan's edible art is selling like hotcakes, which makes sense because they're hotcakes. No complaints from customers, so there's no flapjack. Woo! And if Dr. Dan keeps making diners flip, he'll prove he's no flash in the pancake. Hate to dine and dash, but it's time to go. We'll see you tomorrow.